What is up down and sideways, all you beautiful individuals? Welcome back to League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you beauties for what I'm going to say was maybe the craziest finals weekend that we have had definitely in recent memory. I'm hard pressed to come up with a crazier weekend to wrap up a split in the history of League of Legends. No, nope, I think that you're right. There's no rebuttal on this one. It has to be the craziest one. Maybe not as down to the wire as certain finals that we've had in the past, but the dramatics were there. Regardless of region you wanted to take your trip to finals in, delivered this past weekend. And a lot of that is, of course, because of the results, starting with the Golden Road being broken, which I'm somewhat happy about because we don't need to listen to that narrative now throughout the World Championship. But yes, Hanwha Life picking up their first title as Hanwha Life. Obviously, this org goes back to the Rocks Tiger era, but definitely got the level up from Zeka in this series. He gets finals MVP games four and five. He's 13, one and 14. And immediately, we got to say, Genji, maybe not at their best level on the day, but they were by no means in a slump or not looking good. This was Hanwha Life showing up on the day. Hanwha Life being a five-man unit that felt like they were on the exact same page from start to finish. It felt like this was a Gen G that thought that, okay, yeah, sure, we've seen you do what you've done against a T1, against other players, other teams in the LCK. But it's going to be a different story when you step to the plate against the all pro first team gen g standing in front of them on the lck final stage and it wasn't any different it was the hanwha life that has approached that has tackled all these other teams in the lck including a t1 the match just before and you saw exactly that type of form that type of lethality come across from this hanwha life team specifically Zeka in the mid lane. This is one that I think a lot of people, of course, are going to be praising, giving their flowers to, and acknowledging. But you have to recognize this pattern of success starting earlier in the year in the LCK. Acknowledge where he was leveling up and showing these signs throughout the back half of the summer split towards playoffs that we got this peak type of performance that reminds a lot of people of the peak he was hitting back in 2022 when he won the world championship. And alongside him, a masterclass performance out of Peanut in this series. You probably are looking at the two best jugglers of all time here going head to head in these finals. And it's Peanut coming out on top. How many times was he the guy leading an engage for Hanwha Life? And immediately all four other players are jumping, following up with him. And I think that this is a massive win for Peanut. You're talking about a guy that a lot of people during his time on Gen G still weren't giving the credit for what he was doing for that organization. In comes Canyon as the replacement, the guy that everyone says he's even more of a best, a top level option than Peanut is for your squad. Peanut just says, hey, I'll go to Gen G Orange and I'll win the championship here with the boys for Hanwha Life. Delivers some of the best performances we've seen from him in his career. The consistency that he is operating at right now and the smart, the intelligence, that we see from him throughout the choices that he is making and how it best sets up his teammates. Peanut, I, you know, I, I'd be hard pressed to find a jungler right now across the world that is having the type of impact that he is able to have for, for this Hanwha Life squad. And you want to talk consistency. How about seven titles, the mo second most behind Faker in the history of the LCK with five different organizations he's won with. Yeah, that's got to be one of the impressive things when you're talking about Peanut's career and looking through these different eras of teams rising either to be the top team in the LCK or that challenger to a T1 or whatever it was going to be in that situation. Peanut's career getting another championship where it all, you know, started back all back in the day with the Rocks Tigers type of thing with Hanwha Life. You love to see that come through. I know someone had the Rocks Tigers jersey at the T1 Hanwha Life uh, game, man, they must be over the moon seeing the championship come through for Hanwha Life. And how about a little bit forgotten now uh, in this hoopla is Viper picking up his first LCK title. And it's uh, obviously, I'm sure, cathartic for him getting it against his boys, Kachobi and the hands to still see all these Griffin members throwing down in the finals but you were already sweating at the level of the lck heading towards the world championship you watched this finals because despite yes it being a big upset for hanwa both teams 
playing at an incredibly high level, and now you have Genji as a second seed to match up against in the Worlds? That's extremely scary. That is oh. extremely scary for everybody else that Gen G is going to go under the radar as a number two seed. They are going to get slotted in. They're going to be this uh, this animal as a number two that is stronger than they should be. And that's going to be a problem for your number three and number four seeds looking at them type of thing. Going to be a problem for that number one seed going, well, what did we get into? Getting a Gen G thrown at us in this type of situation. The way the dice rolls when something like this happens in the LCK. Zeka, Viper, these are guys you're looking at and, you're, and you know talking about Zeka. He's he's never won an LCK championship before. This is the very first LCK championship. Not a lot of guys winning worlds before they win their domestic championship. So this is a good one to get in the closet for Zeka. They're just we're gonna start paying Peanut as a mercenary to get guys their first LCK titles. He was doing it at the start of this Gen G dynasty with guys like uh, Chovy bringing them up to get their first LCK title. Now he's doing it with both Zeka and Viper. So yeah, an absolute masterclass across the board for Hanwha Life. Super excited for that organization to prove that the investment in uh, esports and this game in particular is paying off dividends now for them. Yeah, you love to see that. I think the other uh, thing that you got to be looking at in this series is a win for Hanwha Life where Dorn wasn't really a factor positive for them in this series. That's feeding for three games out of the five, but I was going to be a little bit more generous, a little <laughs> bit softer with my description for old Doran, but I, I think that one is maybe the most accurate one to describe what type of gameplay we had from him in this series, which is such a far cry from what we have seen from him throughout the, the entirety of this year for Hanwha Life, that stability, that option that he has provided in that top side, the challenges he has represented to players like Zeus on the opposing side. This was going to be one that we thought was as well going to be this kind of, you know, tough stalemate in the top side between Keen and Doran. It was almost all Keen in this matchup in those early parts until we get, of course, a clutch, clutch game four coming through from Doran to try and pull things around for Honda Life. Yeah, and credit to him. You know, he was bad the first three games, but a couple of Jack's performances really bounced back and rebounded. We know Doran is immune to tilting and mental breakdown, so... Big ups to him and the rest of Humble Life. Super excited for the entire squad. Not to be outdone. We didn't get a game five in the LCS finals, but we 100% should have. And never in a hundred more years of gameplay will you ever see a championship clinching moment come down to Winions on the Nexus. The absolute peak of LCS Cinema is Winions for the finals. Holy moly. ByQuest and Team Liquid, game four. Yes, we're talking about the ending that was supposed to send us to Silver Scrapes in the LCS. That was, you know, FlyQuest going for it all. Master talking about, oh man, I've just made a huge mistake diving in to this Team Liquid con to try and get the stock. We're going to game five off of a massive mistake from FlyQuest. Wait a minute. It's the Windians in the base, Super Minions. This is one where it's it's a brutal mistake. It's absolutely understandable because check the last time that you went through the full equations to understand exactly, okay, it's, it's you know, it's this many waves of Super Minions and they're going to be at my Nexus and this is how, how much damage they're doing to the turret and the Nexus. All these type of things in these equations gets lost in the moment. Nobody goes back for Team Liquid to help out, to stop it, do anything. Nobody can. I don't know. It doesn't work out. And it's the Minions crushing the game for like. And listen, I get it. Obviously, it's an insane moment. The comms are probably all over the place. They're just screaming to end the game. Once we get the full release, I can't wait to listen to that. But there's five members of Team Liquid up. You, you should be able to send impact back. You don't even need a big wave clear. Just one guy to absorb the minion hits before they get to the Nexus, and you're winning the game. Maybe even if Whippo TPs in, you can still defend it anyways. Absolutely insane. You heard the quick comms at the end of the FlyQuest guys all screaming like, we thought we just threw the whole game. And honestly, the momentum that Team Liquid would have had going into game five, I feel like they'd be big favorites in that fifth game and FlyQuest might be losing this whole series. Huge, huge. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think we can really uh, quantify or come up with any type of past experience that would relate exactly to this. Just that 
magnitude of a throw heading then into a game five, having to reset the clock, all these type of things. Looking at a Team Liquid team where, yes, we have seen improvements. Yes, we have seen growth and, and, and you know, they've been maturing, but still a very tough situation to be able to rebound, wipe the slate and approach as that brand new game five. They don't have to. And you could even see it back in the FlyQuest war room, right? With the coaches, they had the camera on and everything like that. They're all watching it go down. Everybody, instant depression, silence when they make those mistakes until one guy says, look, look at the minions, the minions. They're going to get it for us. They get it done. What an ending. They needed to give that MVP to the minions for this whole series because that uh, absolutely nutty. But again, you look at this series as a whole and it was very High quality, especially for LCS standards in these finals. It's not the level of Gen G Hanwa, but both of these seeds, you're feeling really good about the LCS, at least the top two, going to Worlds this year. I, at least the top two, which was needed after, yeah, well, after maybe stop it quite, a, <laughs> quite a, a rough one against 100 Thieves is the way to look at that and touch on that a little bit later. But yes, FlyQuest and Team Liquid... Uh, w without a shred of doubt, really proving that these are the two top options that you want to be sending from the LCS. I know, of course, still some thoughts, still some considerations floating around about what the hell happened with Cloud9 this whole year. That's a story for another day, man. You can focus all your attention on Team Liquid and FlyQuest right now as they're moving towards our international event to end the year. And again, it's that top side of FlyQuest highlighted definitely in this series because you had yeah you had a bad moment between inspired and whippo that almost cost them the whole series but no no they won the series and inspired was kind of gapping umpty in both sides of some of these ivern lilia other ip ap carry matchups and whippo the games where he's popping off you've got an ergot well that wasn't really popping off he was dying a lot in that one but especially that garen in game four he absolutely took over and you saw in the teaser for this he said i want to be the reason my team is winning finals he's lost five finals in a row been the runner-up well he was one of the main reasons why flyquest won this set and that's a, a real positive, feel-good story here in the LCS is Whippo finally getting over that hump, getting that accomplishment for himself. It's one of the things I like to see. I know a lot of people sometimes sour on certain imports that come over and don't find the you know knockout success and all these type of things. But I think someone that is committed to that region that they are moving to and wanting to find success and pushing it forward, these type of things, Whippo is one of those guys you got to put in that category. So good to see him find the success here. In the LCS, you touched on Inspired. We were just talking about Peanut and how fantastic and how amazing he looks. Inspired's probably, you know, uh, one of those next up, or at least the closest next up that a Western jungler is at right now, the way that he has been playing. I think one of the key things that he has shown, regardless of meta, doesn't matter, AD, AP, whatever you want, tanks, carry, he'll play it all and he'll make it work. For this FlyQuest team, that is one of the biggest things that I think that he brings to the rip. One of the ones that I don't think is acknowledged enough by his haters, what he is able to do positively for this team. And I'll give another uh, quick touch on sh uh, shouting out Whippo in that sense in the top side. I like his ability to sense out things in the game. He can get that feeling where everyone else might say, okay, the numbers tell me this, or they tell me that type of thing. He's whippo has got that sense. He's got that feel for the pulse of the game to understand, okay, we make this play, we make this change up, this thing shifts things all of a sudden type of thing. I think that is absolutely the game changers you need in, in your roster. So that, that ending seems like a poetic end as the final play in the history of the LCS as we go into this new America's format for next year. And you combine that with the opening ceremony they had for this, which was far and away the best they've ever done in an LCS Finals. You had all these former iconic members of LCS history. Boy Boy and Skara are there. High is there. Doublelift and Bjergsen come out with the trophy. The hype and lead up for that, it was, it was poetic across the board. Oh, peak, peak cinema. I got my hands up. It is fantastic from the LCS to close out this chapter, this, you know, a section of history for the league and for the region into this type of way. Absolutely. Go out with a bang. Celebrate. Acknowledge. I think, you know, the thing that I would criticize or kind of nitpoint about is I want more. I want more. I know there's more history, more legends, more people that have built up the LCS to either be what it is and, uh, you know, at the peak that it is now 
or to have even survived all the valleys and the tribulations that we've gone up and down with over the course of this esports. I think it was a wonderful ceremony to close things out in the LCS to, you know, uh, go in on a good note to the next stage, next format that we're going to be having. Also give a quick shout out to the CB LOL. They did kind of a similar type of thing where they went all out for their finals presentation, you know, having like, you know, the walkthrough with the trophy and everything like that, leading through the fans. It was great. I'm hopeful. I know a lot of people, there are some people that are still negative about this type of move into the future. But closing this chapter like this and moving into that next stage, I think is a, a good thing for League of Legends. You should be feeling excitement for this new format, even though it feels a little sad to say goodbye to that whole nostalgic era. I think the future is very bright for both CB Law and the LCS post-merger. We got to touch on the downsides of these amazing final weekends, and that is, of course, uh, the third seeds and third seed hopefuls from the LCK and LCS. T1, I know the pick ban was not good against Hanwha, a just went with Ziggs and went opposite Smolder the entire series, and those were the weak points. But how are we feeling about T1 headed into Gauntlet now? They still have two opportunities. Even if they lose to D+, they can still beat KT or Firex as that fourth seed, but not at an all-time high in terms of confidence in them. No, and the Ziggs is a major problem of why not having that type of confidence in team one at this moment is this absolute insistence on jamming the zigs into your composition into what you can play how you play all these things and we saw you know in, in honda life maybe you try you know for one of caitlin mid lane and then we got the zigs in the bottom lane and you know we're working through all these things maybe you try the zigs mid lane even or whatever i don't even know what was going on but really what I actually... Ziggs, just ignore it all you're not going to need to play it for worlds it's going to be so nerfed just ban it until that was my answer is i just actually want them to ban it in the first place remove it from the game not having to worry about okay we got to adapt we got to change these type of things we got to prepare none of that Ziggs isn't here and you can use that i think one of the other things to identify that went wrong for t1 against honda life is a very high priority on banning out Pina, which that's not necessarily wrong. But in doing that, you're taking away a lot of the options for someone like Owner as well on your own team. Maybe we slot one of those bands in for Ziggs and say, okay, the Vi, the, the Maokai, the Ivern, whatever we're having banned away, now we can roll that for someone like Owner. Now there's a different opportunity for us in the jungle. And I think that is one of the paths that T1 needs to explore if they're gonna get by a D plus Kia. And yes, let's get that straight, get by a D plus Kia, because this has been a D plus Kia that's been down here for a couple days more, a week more or so, has had that preparation, and more so that preparation of seeing T1 continue to struggle with that Ziggs pick, against that Ziggs pick, the Smolder pick as well from Hanwell Life. You have seen all that. You have got the ammunition that you need to take on the big dragon in T1. The question is T1, is that dragon prepared for the matchup against D plus Kia? And if that one doesn't go, are you even confident in a matchup against KT or Fear X at the bottom of the table for that fourth spot and final spot for Worlds from the LCK? It, it was mildly infuriating seeing Zeus play Zeri, Faker's playing Caitlyn, and I'm stuck watching Guma on Ziggs for an entire series on these picks that we've seen him completely take games over on the guy who's been the most consistent and best player for you all year. Get him off of Ziggs in these matchups in the gauntlet because we need to be seeing T1 at Worlds. doesn't matter what seed they are. We know they can turn it on when the World Championship rolls around. I'm less sure that 100 Thieves can turn it on as the World Championship rolls around because all the hype, all the momentum from that Cloud9 upset and they get completely smashed by FlyQuest and that's... You know, it's half you're going, how did Cloud9 lose to this? Were they that bad on the day? But then you see the level FlyQuest was at against Team Liquid in the finals, and you go, okay, there's just a huge gap between the third seed and the LCS and the top two. Yeah, I think it's one of those ones where it, it's almost both answers are correct there. I think Cloud9 was that bad on the day, and I think flat out, yes, there is that big of a gap between what should be that top tier of the LCS and where in a perfect world, 100 Thieves would find themselves from the summer split and where things would finish out. 
We're not in one of those. And they are finding themselves in that third spot and heading to Worlds, going into that play-in type of situation, which I think a lot of people acknowledge is the right spot for a team like this, if they're gonna be having an opportunity to go to Worlds and, and what they can learn, the experience, all these type of things. Does that leave you, you still unconcerned about what they're gonna do and how they're gonna respond to these experiences and events that are gonna happen at Worlds? No, no, that does not ease any of that type of concern one little bit and yes getting blasted the way they did by FlyQuest certainly a team that has had their own questions when you think about it internationally uh, it brings even more doubts for the LCS how about now you're gonna get a sniper versus summit matchup in the play in stage holding the honor of the LCS is the rookie against the guy who was basically an MVP of the league a few years ago you got to you got to do the zigs hover for us, man. That's the key. That's how you knock him off his game. He's going to be thinking it's APA on the other side. And then you bust out the general sniper Renekton up in the top side. He's going to he's going to see this guy doing Fortnite dances. on oh, the no. What is this guy? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But hey, look, I'm excited for that matchup. This is one of those ones where, you know, I think 100 Thieves are in for for more than they're expecting when you're looking at a side like Rainbow Seven and what Summit has for him in the top side and at the same time they've got more firepower than i think a lot of people are going to respect from the lcs are going to respect from the unexpected lcsc to go oh you're not a cloud nine whatever you're going to be uh you know we're going to blow right through you i don't think that's going to be the case i think absolutely 100 thieves should show up despite what we saw from them uh in their match against FlyQuest this past weekend yeah, and people doing VOD review from that series are going to say, why is this team going to Worlds? And they're going to have maybe the biggest underdog status that an LCS team always having an underdog status, but bigger for them than it has been in years past. So still think they're going to show up and perform well at the play-in stage, but obviously did not end things well in playoffs. But either way, absolutely insane weekend of finals as we finally start looking towards that full preview of the World Championship. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Wonderful individuals. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity-flip.